What's the difference between a material latent defect and a patent defect? John Carter here. I'm the broker owner at Remax River City in Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, we get this question quite a bit, uh, especially as people are looking to buy properties that are either have been recently renovated or they want to buy a property to renovate. Uh, that's where it shows up most commonly, but it shows up in all sorts of ways. So uh, anytime it does show up, it's always a major issue. So we want to help clear that up. So a patent defect is simply, it comes from the Latin words of all these things in our real estate acts and uh, is simply something you can see. Uh, it's plain sight. If there's a crack in the foundation, but the wall is exposed and it's easily viewable by anyone viewing that property, they don't need to specifically disclose anything about that as a seller because you can plainly see it uh, open in, with your eyes. So um, where this shows up is with uh, material latent defects. This is put out by our uh, Real Estate Council of Alberta, uh, protecting consumers and gives some examples uh, that I wanna go over and give you some live examples that we've had come across our, our office. So uh, dangerous or potentially dangerous to the occupants, unfit to live in. So if there's uh, mold or things like that that don't pass uh, health standards by the government, unfit for the buyer's purpose, should that purpose be known by the seller or by the industry professional. So give some tangible examples here. Uh, dangerous or un potentially dangerous could be um, lack of permits, uh, known work orders that you've received from the government about uh, maybe stairwell uh, to the basement, or we've seen even uh, attic insulation that doesn't meet code, uh, windows as well that were installed without permits, uh, uh, other bathroom or kitchen development or basement development done without correct permits. All of those things are material latent defects. So it might be a brand new renovation. And the reality was permits were required to ensure safety for fire code, to meet current uh, standards for um, other building codes. And that wasn't followed. That's a material latent defect. The other big one that's shown up recently is the example of unfit for the buyer's purpose. So. We had an example where a buyer was a builder buying a property that was vacant and uh, being sold as is where is. Even with that dynamic, they were selling it, intending on it being ripped down, but it could have been renovated and, and fixed up as well. The buyer's intended purpose, so that is the key element there, their intended purpose was to redevelop the property. And they had a swimming pool in the, bay, in the backyard in, in prior that was uh, filled in. So it wasn't removed. They took all the concrete that was there and simply just dug up part of the, the concrete, filled it in and then backfilled into it. So that builder uh, had to incur an extra $10,000 of cost to remove all that concrete from the ground. And so that counts as a material latent defect. Now in that case, it was covered with disclosures and acknowledgements. Uh, to the buyer, um, but they uh, their professional missed it on the other side. Um, and so that's the importance of due diligence. And ultimately, all these things are buyer beware. But there's a fine line between the seller's obligation to disclose and the buyer's obligation to satisfy themselves uh, to buying the property. So most common examples are where it's very expensive to repair. The seller has received notices from a local government or other authority about something needing to be fixed or where there's a lack of permit. So a couple of examples that we see most commonly, decks, um, exterior development, garages done after the fact, even kitchen bath renovations, uh, putting in any kind of like fireplace, anything that involves a gas line requires a permit from the city to make sure it's done to code. So any of those things primarily that result in like a very expensive fix uh, are uh, deemed material latent. So the seller, if known, has to disclose that to the buyer uh, before they make an offer because that can affect the value. It can affect the, the, uh, the value they're willing to pay, whether or not they're even willing to do the deal. What happens when you discover these things during an inspection? Or what happens after uh, the fact you've taken possession and discover it? So most common examples we see of this uh, during inspection, the home inspector, uh, they have great technology these days using infrared cameras, moisture readers, all kinds of other technology, 
and they literally can kind of see with x-ray vision in, in a lot of cases uh, a material problem. So if they discover that problem, it's now known and that seller may not have been aware of it. That happens often. It might be a moisture leak behind a wall that hasn't caused them a problem and they've never seen any moisture, but it's causing mold to develop. Once discovered, the buyer's now aware and they can negotiate accordingly if they want to make changes to the deal or choose to back out if they have a home inspection condition or others. And the seller now must disclose that going forward because it's now known to them that they must disclose it. Uh, the other common example is that someone buys a property with intent to renovate and in the process of renovating, they uh, maybe open up walls in the basement and discover a foundation crack. Um, uh, so in that case, the onus is on the seller to disclose it if they were aware of it. And it's a really important distinction there is that you may discover something that the seller was unaware of. And again, consult legal counsel on that, whether or not you would have grounds to, to sue and hopefully win or not. Because if you can't prove that it was known by the seller and they deliberately uh, misled or, or chose not to disclose that information, uh, the, in our experience, the lawsuit uh, often can't, uh, can't win, can't carry any weight. The third example is uh, that we often see is water in the basement. That's a really common one. And so if there's water in a basement after a big storm, uh, you have to discover the source of that water and uh, determine where it's from. We've seen examples where they simply, the, the new owners didn't know they needed to put the, the downspouts down uh, and that caused water in the basement. That's not a material latent defect. Generally speaking, we have to determine source. However, if the seller had gotten work done and had this issue in past and knew that there was this issue and didn't disclose it, uh, that's a whole different story. So there's a lot of fine lines there with material latent defects. The main one is to ask questions about permits if you're working with sellers and when you're repping your buyer, ask questions about um, uh, uh, any recent developments or repairs, you know, when you're looking at that home, look through, does that paint look newer? Uh, those kind of elements, does it look like repairs were done or something was done after the house was built, even on newer built properties? Uh, ask for copies of permits. And as always, uh, you're welcome to consult uh, legal counsel and get independent advice, uh, but it's the power of working with a professional realtor that has a lot of this expertise from years of experience on various deals, on hundreds and if not thousands of transactions, and uh, that we bring that to each client experience. So let us know any other questions or situations you have. Uh, and as always, we're here to uh, answer your questions.